Good day everybody, welcome to another Affinity Photo tutorial. This week I have got another fantasy composite for you. You can see I've got all my assets in place down on the side here. We're going to start off with this picture here of the background. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up to my rectangular marquee tool here. I'm going to make a copy of the sky and one of the foreground. So I'll start with the sky. Just come right down to that horizon line there. Maybe go a little bit under and Command J. We'll come up here and hit Invert Selection. Make sure we're back on the background here. And we'll make another copy just of the foreground, Command J. Let's get rid of the marching ants. We can now turn off the background. And as you'll see, I've got sky there and the foreground. So just copies of each one of those. Now, I did make a copy of this tree as well using my selection brush tool, but to save a little bit of time, I've already got that here. So I'll just turn that on. And if I grab my move tool, you'll see that I have a copy of that tree. I will include this tree on the Buy Me A Coffee site if you don't want to cut it out yourself. So um, that'll be available for you um, on the Buy Me A Coffee site. So let's put that tree back in place. And the next thing we're going to do is turn on our planet here. So we've got this picture of our planet. So I'm going to move the copy of the sky above the planet and the copy of the foreground above the planet as well. So you can't see the planet, but what we'll do on our sky copy here, call that sky copy, I'm going to change the blend mode to screen. And you can see now that the clouds are in front of the planet and our tree because we made that copy of the tree is now in front of that planet as well so that looks a lot better so what i'm going to do now just on the foreground here going to add an exposure we're going to add a few exposures you can do this sort of with levels or however you would like to do it i like to use exposure i'm going to drop the exposure of the foreground quite a bit I'm also going to put a exposure on to sky copy and I'm going to drop that quite a bit as well. Not too much. I still want to see those clouds. So that looked pretty good. And I'm also going to add an exposure to my tree here. And I'm going to drop that down quite dark as well. And while I'm on that exposure for the tree, I'm going to grab my brush and come to my brushes and again, pick a soft brush. My color will be painting in black, 25% okay. I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger and because my light from the planet is here, I'm going to add that light back into my tree, sort of coming down this side here. A little bit down here most of those branches sort of catching that light and some of these ones at the back here as well. Down that side. That is okay. So there we go. We've got that light back on our tree. Let's hide our sort of horizon line a little bit with a little bit of mist. So, so what we'll do is add a new pixel layer Still on our brush, we still got our nice soft brush. I'm going to take my color picker and sort of pick this sort of blue color here. This is going to be the color of our mist. I'm going to make my brush quite big. Starting off outside of my picture here, just going to click once, holding my shift key down right across, and I'm going to click again and just add some mist. Make my brush a little bit smaller light along that line and just add my mist. Little copies there. And there we go, just got my mist in the background there. So I'm happy with the way this is looking at the moment. So I'm going to add my first character in and it's gonna be the picture of the robot here. So let's just click on the robot and turn him on. Now at the end of the video, I'll have a, just a brief description on how I created this robot from this original picture that you can see on the screen now. We'll start off again with an exposure on our robot and 
flip that to the robot. I am actually going to just come up to my move tool and make my robot a little bit bigger. Okay, back to our exposure, we're going to double click on that and make that quite dark as well, about there. While we're here on our brush, back again, we've still got our soft brush, we're still at 25%. Let's get our colors back to default with our D on our keyboard and just going to do the same and just that light coming from that angle, just give our robot a little bit of light on this side. The sun coming down here, give extra light. Okay, maybe a little bit up the top here. That's not too bad. The other thing I'm going to do is add a pixel layer and I'm going to back to the robot. So I'm going to fill this layer with black. So make sure we are on black. Come over here to our flood fill tool and fill the robot with black. And I'm going to change this pixel layers blend mode to add. And that is the closest to a linear dodge. So we've changed that to add. Back on my brush, still going to keep the 25%. Going to drop the opacity about to 60%. And I'm going to use that blue again that we copied from the atmosphere here. And that is just going to give me a little bit of these highlights here around the robot. And there we go, you can add more of those highlights if you like, just wherever you think that they need to be with that light. So I'm happy with that at the moment. So I've got my highlights in place. The last thing on the robot, let's add another pixel layer right underneath the robot here. Let's change our colors to black. Still on our brush, I think I'm gonna leave the flow and opacity a little bit. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of shadow around the robot's feet here, a bit out here, a bit under here where this arm is. So let's add our next character and we're going to add the character of our man here. And again, if you want to see how I created this character, uh, that will be at the end of the video as well. So let's just make this character sort of... Um, about there, maybe a little bit smaller, just to get that sense of size. The robot is really quite big. We're going to do the same to our character. We're going to add an exposure. Clip that. Make our character quite a bit darker. Again, on our brush, we'll come back to our brush. We're going to be painting in black again. Still happy with my opacity and flow here. And I'm just going to add that light just on this side of my character here. And I'm going to do the same again. I'm going to add another pixel layer. Clip that to my character. Make sure we're on black. I'm going to fill that with black. And I'm going to change the blend mode to add. Again, the closest thing to the linear dodge from Photoshop that we have. And again, I'm going to choose that blue color that I've been using. Back on my brush, make my brush a little bit smaller. Let's make our picture a little bit bigger using the right and left bracket keys. And I'm going to add some of that color for the highlights on my character here. So I'm just going to go around and do that quickly. Okay, I'm just going to highlight these tools as well that I've put into the character's hand here. Let's give those just so we can see them a little bit better. And highlight our water here in his tank. As I said, I'm going to show you how that I created and made this tank and the character at the end of the video. If you are interested, you can skip along and have a look at that. Maybe a little bit of light. 
Okay, I'm happy with that. So Command zero. Again, as we did with our robot, we'll add another pixel layer on the bottom. We'll change our color to black again. Still happy with that flow and the opacity. Again, make my brush a little bit bigger. Make sure that we're on that black and we'll add a little bit of shadow just in front and a little bit of shadow on our man here as well. Make that a little bit smaller so we've got our character in place now. The next thing I'm going to do is add my other robot arm here. So I'm gonna turn my robot arm on here and you can see that tension is this, as this robot arm has broken off from our robot here. So it's gonna pretend that's broken off and we're gonna lay it down here in the desert, just near this tree here right down there, maybe up a little bit. And what I'm gonna do with that robot arm is make a copy with Command J and the bottom copy here, I'm gonna come down here to my layer effects and add a color overlay and that's going to be black. And on that one, I'm going to just move that color overlay out a little bit for its shadow and change the opacity down to about, oh, there we go, about 60% at this stage look pretty good. We'll also add on our robot arm here an exposure so we can make that darker. And while we're on our exposure, we'll come back to our brush. Still happy with my flow. Make sure we're on bat black. And again, we will add some of those little highlights along here. And also we'll do the same again. Another pixel layer, flip it. Let's fill that with black as well and change the blend mode to add. Back on that blue color, back on my brush. Make my brush a little bit smaller and I'm just going to add some of those highlights along here as well. So the next thing I'm going to turn on is these picture of these cables here. They're the same ones I've used here, but I'm going to use them again. And also this rust layer that I've got. I'm going to clip that to the cables. And then on that rust layer, we'll grab our move tool and we'll move it over onto our cables. Change the blend mode to overlay. And let's just position those. And it's the same method that I've used for the robot to get the rust on the robot as well. Clipping that rust layer to the layer of the robot and the arm. So what we'll do now is also add that exposure to make those cables, we'll clip that, make those cables a little bit darker. And then on our move tool, move them into place. We're going to have them sort of coming out of the robot arm here. So just about there. And I'm going to add a mask just on there on those cables. Come to my brush and a paint in black. So colors back to default again. Let's zoom in. Let's just fade those cables in so they're looking like they're coming out of that arm. Not too bad, Command zero. On our exposure layer, we'll go on our brush again. We're in black and we'll just do a little few highlights on those cables as well. That is looking pretty good. And we can move that rust layer around as well by clicking on that layer and we can make that bigger. Let's see if we can get a little bit more color in there. That's not too bad. So we've got our cables in place. Got one more little asset here that we can use, which is our sparks here. Um, I've used it up here on the robot uh, previously, but we may just add that, change the blend mode to screen. And let's just see if we can add that in to provide, sort of say this robot has got sort of maybe some life. Let's just come up here to our blending 
ranges or options and I'll just turn that down so we can't see that extra bit there and just have that little spark in there. That's not looking too bad. Okay, I might just tweak my man here on the exposure and just bring that exposure down a tiny bit more. So there we go, everyone. We've used all of our assets that we have. So we can now come up to our man here, come up to layer and merge visible. And let's do our old little trick on our tone mapping here. We'll pick our detailed one again. This time the tone compression, I'm gonna bring all the way down to about 5%, four or 5%. Drop my exposure a tiny little bit. Maybe my saturation, tiny little bit up. Vibrance up and a little bit of that detailed refinement. And I might just add just a little bit of warmth on the white balance here. And then on the curves, it's going to do my S curve. Sort of about there looks good. Hit apply. Don't forget to watch the explanation of how I created the robot and the character. And also there'll be some of these assets available for you on the Buy Me A Coffee site. If you'd like to support my channel, you can also do that on the Buy Me A Coffee site or on the Super Thanks link below. But until next time, I'm gonna to say to you, stay well, stay safe, and I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for staying till the end of the video. This is the brief explanation of how I created the character that I'm using. So these are all the pictures that I've used to create the character. So I have the picture of the fireman here where I've cut out the fire tank. I've also got this picture of this person in the forest and I've just used their head to create this picture and also this water bottle. So starting off with the water tank, how did I get the water inside the water tank here? So we'll just click on the water tank here. Just use my rectangular marquee tool. But first of all, we'll come to the move tool and we'll just make that water tank sort of a lot straighter about there. And then on my rectangular marquee tool, I just very carefully made a selection on the tank here and then use my command X and my command V. So I've got this cut out on the water tank here. We can get rid of the marching ants and on that cut out, I've come down here to my layer effects and I've clicked on 3D. And then on that one again, I've used my rectangular marquee, make sure you're on the cut out and cut another square out nice and careful. And that one was just Command X. So I've got this sort of frame around the tank here. So next I came to my water bottle again on my rectangular marquee tool and I just cut a section of this water bottle out and that was Command C and Command V. Get rid of the marching ants with our Command D, grab our move tool. Now we've got this section from our water bottle. And we can bring that down underneath that cutout and then we can just add that. Just resize it and add it. And that's how I added the water to the water tank. So I did the same, the cutout down here as well. So on our man here, so then I, we can turn off this man now. So this water tank, once I done it, I added it to my character here. So I've added this tank to the character, so that was just moving that over. And then I added some tools, took away the ax and the gun and just swapped them over for the tools. So that is the creation of my character. Okay, so to create the picture of the robot here, I've used my selection brush tool and I've made a copy of the robot. And you can see here, if I turn this one off, I just made a copy of the robot without the arms. And then I made a copy of this arm and I've used this arm twice. I've just created this and made a copy of that same arm twice and made them quite big as you can see. And then on those arms, I've clipped that rust layer. You can see I can move that rust layer around on that arm. So connected that one to the robot. 
I added this little screen, the little error screen where the I was. And I also added the cables. So I've just used those cables that I showed you earlier and then took a copy of this little section of the arm here and just added it up the top here. I also created some ellipses. And if I turn those on, you'll see that I've just colored using that ellipse just down some of these sides here. And also a pixel layer painting and overlay just to add some of these colors here. So that is the robot. And I've also just added that picture of the electricity just in between there, just a small little detail. So there you go, everybody. That is the creation of the robot and the creation of the character that I used in this tutorial. I have some of these assets on the Buy Me A Coffee site for you to be able to download. The character is from Photo Manipulation Neo Stock. I will link that below. You do have to sign up for their newsletter to get those characters. But some of these other assets like the water tank and like the robot, I can add to the Buy Me A Coffee site. So I hope you can hop over there, download those, use them in your own composites. So thank you for watching everybody. Thank you for all your support and I'll see you in my next video.